In this video, we're going to set up our terminal to look nice along our newly set up Sublime text. As you know, the terminal is just a text-based way to communicate with the computer instead of the graphical user interface that we normally use. As developers, you will spend a lot of time with the terminal, especially as you become more and more senior in your role. So let's make it better. If we open up the terminal, I have it open already for myself. You see that we have the word bash here. Bash is a type of shell that a terminal can have. And what do I mean by that? Well, just as the name suggests, it's just the casing around the terminal that is customizable. There's actually more than one shell. Bash is just one of them. One of my favorites are Oh my ZSH, there's the fish shell, and they all have different things that you can do with them, but it's just another way to customize your workstation. Before I get into that, let's just customize our bash. The way we do that is we can first start off with getting something other than just having this to the left. The way we do that is we type in nano, which is a text editor, and then we do squiggly line slash dot bash underscore profile. And here what we opened is a file that is the bash profile. So this is what our profile will look like. This file gets read every time we open up the terminal. In here, we can put in a bunch of things that we want our terminal to do. One of the cool things that I really think is fun is updating your PS1 variable. And I'll link to this website. And there's a bunch of examples here that we can use. Let's just pick one that, like this one over here, all we do is copy and paste this. And within our bash profile, we can just copy and paste. And as you can see, our PS1 now equals a whole bunch of gibberish that we don't really need to worry about. We see over here that to exit, we need to do Control X, then Save Modify, we just press Y and then press enter. Okay, nothing happens, but the way we fix that is we now do source and then bash profile. It essentially reloads our profile now. And look at that. We now have a cool little prompt to the left. So you can set up your PS1 to display whatever you want. If you want your current directory to display, that's great. If you want your username to display, that's good as well. You can set up in a ton of ways. The other thing that the terminal lets you do, if you click on something like edit background color, you'll get a few things that you can change in your shell. You can change your color based on what you want. And if I bring this over here, you can also click on the profile and actually it gives you a bunch of pre-built ones. That look really cool. Let's do Pro actually, very nice. Again, you can customize this as well. And as I mentioned, a different operating system, you have your own ways to customize it. But every single one usually has a profile and a way to modify what gets displayed based on your needs. Now, the one that I really, really like is a shell that's different than Bash. And I've used this one before, which is really, really good. It has a ton of themes that you can use. They have a bunch of options and you can play through them. The one that I really like is the fish shell. It's very simple. It has all the operating systems on it. And I install it using Homebrew. For those on a Mac, Homebrew is a way to install anything from the web. So instead of me going to a website and installing something, I can use the command line to download things. If you go to the Homebrew website, brew.sh, you can actually just copy this link into your terminal, copy and paste it, press enter, and it will install Homebrew for you. I already have this installed, so I'll just exit that. The way I install fish, you can see over here, all I have to do is say brew install fish. And while this is happening, I want to show you another option. So we have the terminal over here, but iTerm, which again is specific for Mac, is really, really nice and it's way more customizable than the terminal. So I prefer using iTerm2. If I open this and double click 
and look at that. This looks way nicer already. So let's just compare them side by side. I have my, ooh, let's make that a little bit bigger. I have the bash shell here and I have the fish shell here. Although they both are in the desktop right now, they're running on different shells. The fish shell has, just like we have with the bash profile, has its own profile. So you can set it up. And you can set up which one gets activated when you first open up the terminal or iTerm. What I recommend is to set up your workstation in a way that's nice to you. My preferred way is to use iTerm and the fish shell. But if you want to use bash, that's great. The beauty here is that if I type in bash, I get taken to the bash profile. And if I type in fish, I get back to fish. iTerm also lets you just customize everything really nicely. If I go to preferences, you'll see here that I have appearance profiles where we can have colors set up. And there's a ton more you can do with your terminal that I won't get into into this video because everybody has their own way of doing things. I just wanted to show you a basic setup so that now you have a nice environment that you can work in. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.